It's the bass. All right, what did Chris Rock say, son? Okay, this is fresh, hot off the presses. I'll try to read this judiciously. All right. As a comedian, it can be difficult to understand which lines are to be crossed and which ones aren't. Last night, I crossed a line that I shouldn't have and paid the enormous price of my reputation as a renowned comedian. Comedy is never about poking fun at or making light of people with major ordeals happening in their lives. Comedy is about using real-life circumstances to create laughter and bring light to an otherwise dark world. With that said, I sincerely apologize to my friends, Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith, and the rest of the Smith family for the disrespect and disregard I displayed, with, which was unfortunately broadcast for the world to see. I hope that with time, forgiveness can come of this situation and we can all be better. More considerate people in the end. And yeah, more considerate people at the end. Chris Rock. That is hot off the presses. Will Smith won. Will Smith won. Will Smith also Will Smith also put out a statement earlier today on his Instagram. And what was it? Do you like me to put that one's that one's longer? I'll 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 be the scribe. Go for for it, sir. Please. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. This is from Will Smith. On on the spot correspondent. This is on the spot correspondent. (laughs) (laughs) On location in Union, New Jersey. Uh, This Will Smith actually just put this out too. Violence in is how you know their teams coordinated with each other. Violence in all of its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are a part of the job, but a joke that about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I, I was out of line and I was wrong. I'm embarrassed and my actions were not, were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I would like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees, and everyone watching around the world. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and my King Richard family. I deeply regret my behavior. I, I, I deeply regret that my behavior has stained what has been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I am a work in progress. Sincerely, Will. So both men have abruptly, swiftly put out statements. You can tell their PR teams have coordinated this. They are friends, which is the comedy behind all of this. <laughs> so this is in real time. What I mean, the what hey, the yo, so <laughs> they both took the high road, and I think, though, that's probably as classy of... Uh, responses you can get from each of their PR their respective PR teams. Um, but speaking on the, the event itself, um, I mean, I don't even think we need to recap. Like we already, you know, everybody knows what happened. Um, everyone just forgot about Ukraine. <laughs> like everybody's just like war? What? What's it? Did the, did the award show actually happen? It was just... Yeah, <laughs> like, like <laughs> exactly. we, we, were, we were watching Kalishnikovs and shit before, and now we're watching, like, two two multi-millionaires beefing. So Bro, like, it literally feels like I woke up and was in a different world. Like, I like everybody, like, every everything just immediately changed from serious to this. That was the yeah. other. That was the other crazy part because I know that they're friends. <laughs> like pretty much all top tier comedians or comedic actors, they're all homies. Like they all hang out with each other on like a regular basis. Like offset at functions, at events, on Instagram, you'll like see them show up at each other's like events and stuff. So I was like, hell up, Will and J- Will and Chris. Actually, they've been cool for years. Like, what is what's going on? <laughs> so, <laughs> what so- is happening? Just to tee it up, because I, I, I'll i just say my thoughts real quick. It's like, um, I, I feel like Will kind of like OD'd. Like, I could kind of get the other side, because I feel like I'm the Will of the group. Like, I'm the one that tends to overreact about things a lot of times. So I could definitely sympathize with that. With that, he a dick. With that, with that side of things, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, but I'm not famous, <laughs> I'm not rich, and neither is my wife. Uh, but no, I, I, I don't... I don't think he should have done what he did. Like, I get the other side, but at the end of the day, bro, like, you just shouldn't have done that. I feel like both sides kind of looked at it and was like, yo, your boy just fucked up. Let's do, you know, let's clean up PR for the sake of, like, saving face for, like, all black folk, honestly, at the end of the day. And that's kind of, like, maybe where this all came from. But I haven't been looking too deep into it besides the memes. Memes won today. Chris Rock won today. Um, it looks like Will won today. 
But um, let's see. Eddie, you can go first because yeah, we're, um, we're, we're both long winded. So let's just take turns. <laughs> so, you know, when I first heard of it, uh, first of all, I even know the Oscars were going on. Had this had no one said anything to me, I would have no no clue. But when I saw it, I didn't even believe it was real just because I didn't have any context. I just saw like some random Twitter footage and I was just like, wow, it looks like a fucking um 80s kung fu movie, you know, slap and slap and react like Cobra Kai. <laughs> that's that's what it looked like. Even though I, uh, you know, obviously it's real, but that that's that's what it looked like. Um, but yeah, with the context, it's not a big deal in the long run. Like whatever, you know, people are making it seem like this is like, oh my god, you know, this is, you know, on either side is not that big a deal. But I do think that escalating something to to physical violence in that sort of environment you know isn't warranted or called for i've heard the line of thinking that he was oh he was just defending his wife he was defending his family but i don't really buy that because it seemed like it, it seemed like he he reacted especially listening to his speech afterwards right he talks he started talking about you know being the recipient of ridicule and how you just have to take it and you could really tell over the past two years due to you know various reasons that you know him and his family's name has been ridiculed mean to death and that could definitely take a toll on a person i understand that so i believe the the slap itself or him reacting that way wasn't so much about the specific joke, but it's the culmination of, you know, of all this stuff. Like, it's obvious. He basically said it, right? It's the culmination of all the shit that he has to deal with. That being said, I don't necessarily think he's protecting his family by going out there and acting like that. If anything, he's he's opening himself and his family up for more memory and, and ridicule. Um, memory, <laughs> you know, and, and then I, you know, it almost seems like people think that the only two options were to either do nothing or get up and slap him. And there's so many other things he could have done. He could have confronted him after the fact. He could have done some Kanye West type thing, went up there and then spoke his piece. He could have been like, hey, yo, that's not cool. Da, 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 da. Could have advocated for people with, you know, alopecia and whatever the fuck. Like, there's so many things between slapping and doing nothing he could have done. But it seems like the narrative that people are going with is like, oh, they're either praising him for like defending his wife and his honor or whatever. I, I think he was, if anything, it appeared that he was defending his ego more than anything. But like, whatever. I don't know. Who knows? But he, that, that, that shit was uncalled for. And not only that, but it's like, I think it matters who it was, right? It's like. This is a damn near 60 year old man who's much smaller than you, who you know is in a position to not really retaliate. Like, you know, he's hosting. Like, it was a most, it was an emotional reaction, but I don't think it was like, yo. So let me backtrack. There's so many things he could have done between not doing anything and smacking the dude. And not only that, but he's smacking a guy who's like damn near 60 definitely small and frailer than him and is in a compromising position, which he can't really retaliate. Right. It would have been way different. If it would have been a situation where it would have been like, Hey, you know, we're both in an equal position. Like, what do you want to do? Even though I still think taking it physical is un unwarranted and unnecessary, but he did it in a way that he, like he knew he couldn't react to it. So I thought that, was, that came across as like a bitch move. Like, um, I don't, I don't know, man. I just have a feeling that it was, you know, if it wasn't, if it was like The Rock and not Chris Rock, he wouldn't have done that. Oh, yeah. And that's so, been the, that's been the, that was the sentiment all yesterday on Black Twitter and regular Twitter. Yeah. As like, well, as well as, to, as well as today on Black Twitter and regular I Twitter. I, was, check, I check both. I check both. I got to stay abreast. I, on both, I believe it was on. a man of his similar physical stature. He wouldn't have done it. I believe it would, if it was a man who, he, who wasn't quote unquote his peer that he didn't feel comfortable with. Maybe if it was a 
person of a, another race, ethnicity or something like that. I don't think he would have been as, as comfortable doing that. But since ha race card, ha, <laughs> but like, it's like, yo, that's crazy. I, I just think it's crazy. It's not a big deal. And at the end of the day, they probably made up right afterwards. It's probably laugh. Last Chris Rock is conspiracy. He has he has he has material now. Like so, it's oh, really lots of it. Lots oh of man, it. it's 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 a win. They might they might even he might even you know Will Will Smith might even make a fucking you know guest appearance on his oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah, let's well well Chris and Kevin Hart they're coming to Jersey and New York on a little mini New York New Jersey tour this summer. Oh yeah, those are going to be Super Bowl. Yeah, the, I, I announced it on Facebook. They're going to be Super Bowl. Ticket prices for that. Yeah, number great. one, number two. If they, if, if they do do a red table with the two of them, that's going to break records. No, you I know? heard there is a red table happening. You did? You heard that? <laughs> no way, and, bro. And you know he's going to have to ask for permission. To Absolutely. Talk shit about the Absolutely. joke now. Absolutely. Or else Will Smith is going to come yeah. out in New York and smack him again. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, gotta have my Gotta have my That's, have my that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> but here, here's my thing. Not only am I kind of turned off to the fact that. He, you know, he went off and I guess he, whatever, he checked the guy for insulting his wife. But I just feel he wouldn't have that same energy for someone who he, who would be in a position to retaliate. So I kind of think that's kind of like, eh, eh, right? It's not, it's not really cool. And then secondly, it's like, there's so many things you could have done between smacking the dude and not doing anything. And then thirdly, you're I don't I don't I just don't perceive him as like protecting his family in this. This is not like if anything, he's opened them, you know, themselves up for more memory as we've seen already, you know. So right. I, think, I think it, you know, and I think, you know, I think he's protecting his ego. But that's just my opinion. You well, know, if the, if the narrative continues like this. And then and the thing is, it's like, but we haven't know. heard Ugo's idea. Well, and then, real quick, real quick, speaking of narratives, everyone is taking this time to shoehorn whatever their political, sociological lens and ideologies are. They're just throwing it in there and then extrapolating it. I've heard things talking about, like, oh, yeah, this is a step for like black liberation. And I've heard all types of like people are just so invested in this and shoehorning their own narratives into this so hard that i i don't know i think that's weird that's that's weird um i've heard yeah that's true i've heard like respectability politics being mentioned i've heard um protecting of uh black women and black people i've heard all these things which are all valid conversations to have but i think to this specific situation i really don't think any of these apply that's my opinion i mean i i agree with pretty much all those points um ed boy mentioned um you know i've got a unique i feel a perspective toward this particular event for a number of reasons number one i've done stand-up comedy and it's in my it's in my tool chest of things of talents and and career aspirations so i understand what goes into that um into that world and the the pressures and responsibilities and uh Goodness gracious! The just, just, just what goes into that that sphere or that space of doing stand comedy? Now, on a large level or whatnot, what's crazy about this that I've heard from a number of comedians, particularly black comedians, is that this is a dangerous precedent that that might move forward because already um, uh, comedians, especially com- comedians of color or comedians of any background, especially when they do smaller, more intimate crowds, they all they always have to have that in the back of their mind. That yo, somebody rush on stage and it could be on go. You know what I mean? Whether they're performing in New York or LA, one of the bigger cities, or just in a smaller intimate crowd, that's a possibility anyway. Now, when you have somebody of such a great stature of Will Smith doing it, that can low key empower people that already have that mindset. Well, well, Will did it. So next time somebody says something crazy, or if I get singled out or whatnot, Will did it. So. I'm going to go on stage and I'm going to rush Michael Blackson or Godfrey or, or Dave Attell or whoever, or Mike Epps or whoever, you know what I mean? Or, or Kevin Hart, God forbid, you know what I mean? So it's a dangerous precedent that could be set moving forward. So it's something that, and, and I saw a number of black comedians go live mention and mention that shit that, yo, 
this isn't cool. Like he, like Will is, Will is low key endangering us. With what he's doing, like he's not even realizing it. So it's something to be mindful of. That's point one. I got, I got a couple points. I, I gotta get off. Like that's one. Two. So I went to the King Richard advanced screening a couple weeks, a couple months ago, like in at the Warner Media Building in Midtown. Um, it was about a week or two before the the movie went went on HBO Max and before it went to um, to theaters. So my boy Randy Troy, friend of the show, um, he had to, he had a uh, he had advanced tickets since he's in the Writers Guild. So we go to the advanced screening, and Will Smith, who was a guest at the end of the screening, to guest speak along with the two g- girls who played the Williams sisters. So we moved up from um, from our seats. We moved down a bit closer to the stage. No, I did not kiss him. <laughs> DK's a weirdo. <laughs> we move down closer, and Will Smith comes out, and he's right on brand with what he's been talking about, especially over the past year or so, when he's gone over his, like, uh, his, he's written his, his memoir book. He had a weight loss transformation. Uh, he had some issues, in, obviously, with his marriage that's been uh, uh, publicized. He's gone through a lot of life-changing um, events, including him turning 50 as well. And he went out of his way in that speech after the movie to highlight some of those things, as well as to inject positivity and and just life experiences and just growth and family and positive ideals, you know, you name it, just positivity, positivity, positivity. He's always been like on that wave anyway, but I could tell like just, just from his energy and the way he was speaking and what he was speaking about in person in person, a stone throw away from dude that, yo, he's in a good place. He's in a good place. So for me to, so fast forward, that was about two months ago. Fast forward to him getting on stage and smacking the shit out of Chris Rock over a joke. That's a bad look. That's a freaking bad look. As as a Will Smith fan and whoever else was in that building or whoever else, you know, was, was a longtime either colleague or friend of his or whatnot. And boy, you'll hop in. Let me get mine off. <laughs> so, um, so I remember, so aside from that, aside from that, um, to go with, I'm going to stop talking until you stop. <laughs> this guy's being a dick. He's, he's raising his hand. <laughs> I'm gonna, wait till you're gone. I'm just going to do like random sounds in the background. So anyway, so, um, so what was wild too, um, about that event as well that I remember, like, I, number one, I did, I thought it was scripted. I'm right with Edboy. I thought that shit was scripted. Like, I was going through, like, photos from a photo shoot I just done, and freaking, I go on Twitter, like, five minutes after, and Twitter's on fire. They're just like, yo. And then my boy, who's from L.A., one of my colleagues, he go, he screenshots a conversation he had with somebody that was in the freaking auditorium while all this is going on live, and he's like, nah, shit's crazy over here. People are walking around, it's awkward. It, it's 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 real. And then, of course, the footage comes out with Denzel having to console him, Tyler Perry having to console him, Bradley Cooper having to console him. And this is all just with the Will Smith aspect. Who knows what was going on behind the scenes? I just know that Quest Love and Chris Rock, as they walked off the stage, because Quest Love had just won an award. Like uh, again, another monumental event. That that's the other part that, of this that 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 this event overshadowed. It took away from Will Smith winning his first Oscar. Quest Love winning his first Oscar, the first time a deaf actor had won an Oscar, I think in like forever, so much got overshadowed from this event. And I feel like after the fact, which is why it's the next day, 24 hours later, the PR teams go ham. The PR ham, the PR teams go ham. Both these guys put out statements with the quickness. And, you know, there's some type of a clarity that, that that's brought forth. But um, to also go off of that boy's point, no, he did not handle it the right way. And I saw a number of people mention it about defending his wife. Yeah, you talk about wife's kids, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, this, that, and the third. And that's and to me, that's that's a that's more of a reflection of a lot of people's mindsets. Uh, Yo, uh, hold uh, on. Go I, ahead, gotta, go ahead. I gotta quickly interject. Go All right, people are saying, Hey, if someone spoke about my wife or my family, I would physically attack them. That's cool. You're not a millionaire. You're not a multimillionaire protected by a team of lawyers in an insulated environment that, you know, you know what I mean? Like you're not that. So you're exposing yourself to legal action and to physical harm. 
you know, in most situations, especially if you're going to start, you know, stuff over, you know, someone saying something. I that That's all I got to say. My bad. I, I got one question to ask before you go. Right. So a while back, some somebody was trying to interview Will Smith and then they tried to kiss him and Will got really pissed. He backhanded him. And, <laughs> smack, and smacked him. He back so does, him. does Will have a smacking problem? <laughs> no, no, that situation is way different. That person was trying to um, viral hold moment. themselves physically on him, and yeah. then he didn't. And it was like less of a, It was like this little like tap on the face where it, was yeah, like, it wasn't. Hey, it, man, wasn't a, it wasn't. It wasn't a gather. Here, check like your he, boundaries. This is right. he was. This guy was coming towards him, and he was an imminent. I won't say physical threat, but sort of. Let, let's just say threat for you know, uh, lack of a more mild word, but that was a direct reaction. That's fine. I think that's a way different situation. No, I totally agree. And, you know, so just, but no, to go, go back to that point, you know, I've, I've been, I'm in a number of group chats with friends from college and friends from, uh, friends from high school and, and so forth and so on. And there's, there's a number of differing opinions like, yeah, well, that's on Chris. He shouldn't have spoke out, yada, 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 this, then, a third. Again, there's an, what what I think a lot of people who, with that mindset again everybody's entitled to their opinion so be it but to me from my I can only speak for myself and from the way I was brought up and my maturation as a man as a black man as an African man <laughs> in this country and what goes into that is the way the way institutional racism works the way subjugation and all these checks and balances work even when you acquire wealth or, or entertainment or success or whatnot the veil is still there. You know, I was talking about, about, I was talking about institutional racism to somebody the other day and the way institutional racism works, it's water, right? Water never really goes away. Like water isn't, it's either, it's either liquid, it's either gas, it's either a solid, it either enters the atmosphere and, 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 and so forth and so on. But it just changes. It just, it just changes. And as you get, as you move up the ladder, whether it's wealth or whether it's, status or cloud or, 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 or socioeconomic changes, whatever, as you weave your way, in, especially in America, can we speak about this country? As a black man or a Hispanic man or whatever, a non-white, <laughs> you have to deal with level, with that version of institutional racism. And when you do things to spotlight, and, and I think that a lot of that, like, tr- like, uh, transferred into why Will felt so much embarrassment, why he was, why he did break down and cry in between the break and why he did break down and cry in his speech. Cause he understood, yo, this is not just a bad look for me, but this is a bad look for the community. I fucked up like majorly, like majorly, this is bad. Like this is a platform for us. Well, actually the Oscars historically hasn't been a platform for us. We're getting one. I just won my first Oscar and this event's not even going to be remembered as that. Quest Love, just again, just won an Oscar. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a major, major, this is supposed to be a major step forward in the in the 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 change of the mindset that Hollywood's racist, Hollywood's racist, Hollywood's racist, inclusion, inclusion. This is supposed to be a major milestone. That's what the Oscars have been like trying to do. The first time ever a black producer produced the Oscars was last night. All that shit gets wiped out. What's everybody's gonna be talking about? Yeah, Will Smith slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. All that gets thrown out the window, and he and he understood that. Chris understood that, and that's why I think these these statements have been come, have have come out so quickly because the dust has settled, and they realize that yo, drop the ball majorly, majorly, and you know that's that's going to be the narrative for sure. Well, here's all right. Here's not. I'm going to play devil's advocate because I've heard that you know. I was listening to arguments saying that kind of lends into the idea of respectability politics and saying that, you know, we, our behavior shouldn't be um, sort of policed by the white gaze, right? Like if that's something, if I want to defend my family in a certain way, right, I shouldn't care what you know, what white people or the greater society, how they're going to look at me because they're going to look at me a certain way anyway. Why do I have to, um, why do I have to mute myself? Why do I have to, um, sort of hold back my humanity because, you know, because 
you know, just to appease white people. That's kind of a, a counter argument that I've heard. What What would you say to that? Um, I think that I think that again. I think the the, the especially the way entertainment works um, and the way um, top tier celebrities work is it hasn't changed, especially with social media. Social media that, that, that if anything that's heightened it is that perception, optics, what it looks like opinions, all that shit matters. And then you sprinkle in, and then you sprinkle in institutional racism with all that shit. Like, it just exacerbates it and brings the point home. So, to your point that you're making, yeah, it shouldn't. It, it shouldn't, right? Like, how I defend my family, how I defend mine, how I get my point across, that should be the forefront. It should, but the way perception works and the way the optics work, that for, especially with entertainment, that trumps all. That trumps all because advertisers, sponsors, uh, movie execs, gatekeepers, they pay attention to all that because it all comes back to capitalism, which we always mention. It all comes back to dollars. Like if you have negative, if you're in the red in all these areas, right, we're not going to invest money into you. We're not going to, and we're going to get on the phone and be like, nah, nah, don't give him that role. Give it a role to somebody else. We're not going to go with that one. And knowing on top of that, that it's already still a struggle for blacks and non-whites to break through in the, at the top tier level in entertainment or whatnot, that just adds to it. That just adds to it. So what I, I just, I just, in my mind and in my humble opinion, the events last night did not help that cause. And it gave more ammunition, if anything, to those who are not black or who that are opposed to change and progress hap- happening. It gives them just another, it gives them another Kanye moment. See? See, we gave them the stage. We gave them the platform. Look at the dumb shit they did. They fought. The two of them fought. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> two top-tier artists, two top-tier actors, two top-tier entertainers, both black, both black men. They fight in front of millions, borderline billions on that stage. Terrible look. Terrible look. Yeah, I mean, I think, so you're kind of taking the idea where it's like, okay, you know, we're we're not going to act as the world should be. We're going to address the world as it is and, and move accordingly. Um, I think I have to agree. I don't even, I wouldn't even, like, think about that. Like, when I go into spaces, and this is just me personally, right, I don't ever think about, oh, what are white people going to think about me or how is, like, you know what I mean? I just act accordingly you know, um, according to whatever environment that I'm in. Now it could be a situation where I have to, to act out of that and circumvent it. Right. Um, in, you know, outlier cases. Um, I just think in this specific case, I believe it was, it it was just uncalled for again. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Like everyone's going to be fine, but I I do think it, it will have ramifications for, the parties outside of them, because no matter what, you know, Will Smith, no, I mean, no matter what repercussions comes to whomever, Will Smith and, you know, fucking, you know, Chris Rock, every, they're, they're, they're going to be fine. They're, they're good. You know, it's, I guess it's the image of everyone else who maybe aren't as established, you know, how is that going to, um, how is that going to affect people? It may or may not. Who knows? And then there's also this thing about handling things internally. Like if there's like an issue that you have amongst peers, particularly amongst, you know, whatever group you choose to align on, whether it's like a racial group, ethnic group, friend group, whatever. The idea is to sort of be on code in public, but handle your business on the back end. Um, you know, um, I don't know. I, I have a lot of thoughts. I mean, my thoughts boil down to that. It's th- there's a lot of side conversations we can have, right. That have sprung from this, but in this specific situation, I still think taking it to violence is uncalled for. And I think people are trivializing that, right. People are like, Oh yeah, I'll smack somebody. They talk about my wife. I'll smack. It's like, bro, I don't think people really understand the implications of violence 
like once you make things physical, you're introducing all sorts of things to to the table. Things as like people can really get hurt, people can die. And I've also sit, you know, heard people say, "Oh yeah, people die for like people making fun of people or like people get hurt for less than that, get beat up." And I'm like, "So that's the behavior you want to condone? We want to like we like that's cool. It's it's cool to physically assault someone for a joke. It's it's cool to you know, attack someone over speech. It, it you, you know what I mean? Like people are like, oh yeah, you know, like I've I've heard I literally heard the argument a few few minutes ago that hey, we should go back to the times where if you come off crazy or if someone perceives what you're saying is crazy, that they should have license to punch you in the face. Exactly. And now, let me let me jump in right let me let, let, let me jump right back in there too, because I remember um, for my birthday, uh, as I mentioned a couple episodes ago, I went to see Godfrey at the Comedy Center Cellar, and I was so excited. One of my favorite comedians ever. So again, before we even got in, a practice that I had only seen once before, when I went to go see Dave Chappelle at Radio City Music Hall, the second you get in, they have pouches, you need that cell phone. You need that cell phone. And if you need to charge it or you need to check something, it'll here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a ticket number or whatever. You'll go be able. You'll be able to check it at the station to get your phone or whatnot. So fast. So fast forward back to the comedy cellar. Took my phone the second we got in. So I couldn't even take a selfie uh, if Godfrey was around or whatever. But no access to a cell phone. But in the process of it, I understood because in the climate we're in right now, the way cancel culture works, cats are on their freaking job to try to get some footage on YouTube and doctor it to fit their narrative to fit their story, to try to make a comedian look bad. And the comedians, they have to defend themselves. They Listen, like, yeah, I'm getting paid to be here. This is my livelihood. Like, this is what I do for a living. And freedom of speech, I should be able to express my, express my views in this space freely on this stage because at the end of the day, it is jokes. Are all jokes created equally? Should, all jokes, should jokes be made? That's the whole debate for in itself. But the cancel culture... And the way that our society is being conditioned right now to attack specifically comedy, let alone freedom and free speech, bruh, it's, it's, it's under attack. So it goes back to the point I made before of, again, the re- comedians, particularly black comedians or comedians in general, they understood that, yo, yeah, okay, this, this was a bad look probably for Chris. Probably shouldn't have made that, especially if he knows about the condition. And it seems like he did know about the condition. Henceforth, the, uh, the, the statement he just put out. But still, he's a comedian. It's his job to make jokes. And if, there was, and it was a, if there's a breakdown in communication, that gets handled behind closed doors. Not with you coming on stage and smacking the shit out of him in front of billions of people on national television. Bro, so, so I'm so so I'm so so, so yeah. What precedent is that? Like, what type of precedent is that? Like, people like I understand being emotional in the moment and wanting to do physical, like you know, beat someone up. Basically, I get that. We're not perfect. We probably felt that at some point. Doesn't make it okay though. And when I hear people saying, oh, yeah, well, he should have slapped him. He should have did this. He should have did that because he was defending his wife. And it's like, oh, yeah, we should go back to the days where people do that. I was like, I don't think people are truly think, you know, taking their idea to its logical conclusion because they're basically justifying saying that if you say something that someone doesn't like and is offended, they they're at liberty to smack you and and to physically assault you and then people was like yeah yeah sure sure but they don't understand that something that they say that they may think is perfectly okay or coming at someone that that they feel is justified at receiving whatever you know jab that they're giving them they're basically saying it's okay to for them to retaliate physically right and again i don't think people i think people who either A, are unfamiliar with violence, either haven't seen violence in their real life, they they don't know what it's like to get in a fight, or, but you know what I mean? It's very easy to just be like, oh yeah, we'll just get in a fight and that's cool. No, people die. There's real consequences to shit like that. Let's, let's not set a precedent of no. violence. And, and, and one more thing before I, before, um, 
I'm gonna shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, no, you're not. Yeah, but one more. <laughs> That's cap. That's cap. <laughs> but one more. But one more thing. Don't slap me. But one more thing. <laughs> Don't slap me. Um. But one more thing. It's that um shit. Damn, that that was funny. So I'm losing my train of thought. All right, yo, can I say something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. No, go. no, because this is echoing what, what, what you said. Because I, um... Oh, I, 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 I don't remember. No, wait, shut up, shut up. God, fucking... Don't me, though. But... But I'm going I'm to smack you, bro. You yeah. next... <laughs> No, but... One thing I heard people say is that just because you say some shit doesn't mean that you're free from repercussions. And I 100% agree, Right? You should own what you say, no matter what, and you're liable for anything that comes to you. However, that thing shouldn't be violence, right? If someone wants to say something back to you, that's fine. That's cool. But, you know, the repercussion shouldn't be violence, and that's, that's fucked up. That's, I don't, that's, that's a horrible president. Free speech, America, et cetera, et cetera. Agreed. Big facts. Are we going to hear from our guests? Can we get a little intro for our guests? Because I don't know our guests. Like, no, so we don't have a guest. We don't? We, we, have, have, we, we have, have an observer. We have an observer. an observer? I want to say things, but since I'm an actor, and niggas be fucking pulling out shit from years later. Yo, not for nothing. You can just I'm come just on side as, uh, as anonymous. No one said your name. No, it's fine. I'm just... Sideline oh, cheerleading. Right. Okay, cool. She's in the chat. <laughs> uh, the chat doesn't come up, thank God. She's in the chat. She's in the chat. Um, uh-huh. All right, so before I was rudely interrupted by Edwin. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nah, I don't I don't really have much to add that you you two haven't like really, really like said. Um I think the physical thing is a big deal. And I think I want to emphasize that whole thing that I feel like people that don't do martial arts or aren't around like people that actually fight don't understand how serious that shit is. Like, like and you know what? When I was younger, I didn't take it that serious too because I remember going to the park and putting on boxing gloves and no, no one knowing about the safety shit and just wilding out. So it's just like, I, I think people think this shit is like born, uh, you know, the born fucking trilogy where everybody lives at the end, you know, even after getting their ass whooped. And it's like, bro, shit could turn from zero to 100 physical is like od like that that's the, really the thing where he crossed the line he, like he could have gone up there and kanye whatever the fuck he wanted and i would have been like whatever but the smack was od bro and clearly he he realized that after and you know what not for nothing like the other thing that kind of sucks about all this shit is that it, it's really it just makes the whole the whole community look, look bad like whether he likes it or not whether whether it's fair or not i guess it's really the, the better way to put it. It just reflects like the community as a whole. And um, it's unfortunate that, you know, you have to carry that burden um, really. But the physical thing is really that gets me because the joke, whether it was a, a it was appropriate or not, or whether it was a good joke or bad joke, it was a joke. You know, you can argue whether it was, you know, tasteless or, or tasteful, whatever the fuck, you, you know, whatever the word you want to put it on it. That That's a whole separate argument. But it's just like it was a joke. It, it, it's not like he went after somebody that wasn't famous, you know. Like you'd have to do a lot of deep research into that. Um, but you know, whatever. It was like I think he just crossed the line with the hitting. All that other shit. Like I think people could argue that shit forever. Whatever. I don't really give a shit about them. I don't know them personally. Um, but you know, people were working. And that's the shit that gets me. They were all working. Yo, my man, imagine going up to your coworker and smacking him in the middle of the face. You know what I mean? Like at, at the work party. Yeah, you, you know, know yeah. Exactly. at the Christmas party. At yeah, the Christmas party. Yeah, the Christmas that's kind of like, you know? like the thing. That's where it's like, like, something you, you, like come you, on, can, bro. you can get away with like, a lot of shit. Like it's like you're the boss's favorite. Bro. It's like you're the boss's favorite. So you're gonna go smack somebody that you know can't retaliate during work. That's the thing that gets me. It's just like you're going physical. This is literally a work event, whether, you know, we're watching it for entertainment, but it's a work event. Bro, yeah. You fucked out. Like, you know, you yeah. can argue the whole, was it right that he did the joke or not? Was it funny? Yes or no? That whole thing. But, bro, you bugged out. And that's really kind of like my only thing about it. It's just like you got physical. If you didn't do that shit, everything would be gravy. But um, 
I don't know. It sounds like um, everybody kind of won in this situation. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's people on both sides, and it seems like it's enough where like everybody wins because we know in quote unquote debates, it's really about like um, I I don't think anybody would, maybe nobody was catering to a specific base, but the bases are there, pun intended, and um, you know they supported their their sides. No, it's it's important that that the PR teams did their job. You know, it's funny. I I I I, te- I, I teach journalism and statements by, made by companies and and celebrities. That that was a whole section we taught uh, that I taught um, on, on one particular uh, week or whatever. And how how basically when things happen, when events happen, when um, instances take place, that is a poor reflection business wise. A statement gets put out immediately. Like the example I used was. Uh, uh, when Pacquiao made the statement toward gays and how basically he kind of denounced the LGBTQ plus community um, and how probably the next day uh, or, the, or the day, actually the day of Nike put out a statement and the next day they terminated his contract just like that. But statement swiftly because of optics, because of shareholders, because of advertisement and dollars, it always comes back to your brand. But what's interesting with this particular situation, because again, they're friends. They know each other. They hang in the same circles. If somebody were to tell me that, nah, man, Will Smith has never met Chris Rock. Like, they, they don't really fuck with each other like that. This, that, and the third. Miss me with that. Black comedians, I know this for a fact, <laughs> having friends in the industry, black comedians in particular, and black comedic actors, they all run in the same circles. I'm not saying they're all best friends. Not saying that, because that's cap. That's, the, the, that, that's not true with anything. But they all run in the same circles. They have the same circle of friends. They're at the same parties. They're at the same events. They're at the same functions. They're at the same fundraisers. Their families know each other. They're, some of them have the same agencies and the same representation. They all roll together. So for this to happen was definitely, definitely, these, these statements definitely reflect that, yo, after the show was over, or probably even during the commercial break when, when Will was really going through it and who knows what was going on with Chris behind the scenes. I'm sure we'll get a, a, a glimpse into that moving forward. Cats really understood that, yo, we fucked up on both sides. Chris understood that, yo, that joke, whoo, he didn't have to smack me like that, but damn, I, I was probably, I should have probably skipped over that one. And on Will's side, damn, I just smacked this dude on national TV and, and this Oscar that I'm holding, shit supposed to be the crown achievement of his career i'm glad he's still celebrated i saw some video of him partying afterward at the after party which is cool at least he got to celebrate that moment but forever forever this night that moment is going to be linked with this that's the most unfortunate part of it that's absolutely the most unfortunate part but here we are yeah i mean regardless of what happened it doesn't take away from his actual achievement you know but um you know you can handle it better you could definitely make the argument that Chris Rock overstepped the bounds, especially I hear, I don't really know how true it is, but I heard there's talk that prior they were like, Hey, we don't approve that joke. Don't say it. And he said it anyway. Um, Regardless of whether that's true or not, um, you know, you don't, you don't slap a dude on national TV for a throwaway corny joke. Um, especially when the smack, it it wasn't about that. It was, I think it was about your ongoing, you know, public ridicule slash dragging for the past two years. And you decided to take it out on someone, on someone who couldn't really defend himself. Facts, facts. I think I'm with you on that. 100%. I just think that's just, that's a sucker move, bro. Like you didn't say, Hey man, it would have been way better. It was still would have been wrong if he'd be like, hey, man, let's fight. Like, what do you want to do? But he just went up and sat. Like, come on. Bro. Yeah, or if you would have heard that they, like, got into it at the after party or whatnot. And that, <laughs> that that would have made more sense to me. It would have made more sense, and it probably would have been – it pro- might have ended up worse because then it would have gotten, like, you know. But I would have – me personally, I would have respected it a little bit more because he would have been in a position where – he can retaliate, yeah. You know where he's not. He doesn't have his hands behind his back. Where he's not hosting. Where he doesn't necessarily have an obligation to um, the academy 
for for being the host. And that, that's just such a sucker move, bro. Like if you really wanted to, you know, like it. I yeah, man. And the uh, the August anyone uh, anyone had done it to I don't <laughs> I again I have no way of knowing this, but I don't think he would have done it to like. The Rock or his, Jason Momoa or someone, who, <laughs> someone at least physical equal. I don't believe he would have done that. Well, he didn't do it. To, at, he, he, yeah, he, didn't, he didn't do it to August Alsina during the entanglement. So my thing is, oh, that, and, and and he got and he got dragged for that tenfold. Like actually, I showed my parents. Me and my brother, we showed our parents the uh, the red table talk. They're sitting there. They're just like, wait a minute. So she just said this to his face on like in front of i was like yo this red table talk was like in front of millions of people she admitted that yo yeah yeah i had sex i had a whole relationship with dude while we were still married and i didn't don't feel bad about it you didn't get mad then but to get mad over gi jane make it make sense yeah you know i don't really care what they do their personal life how people stuck in their marriages whatever no i'm I'm just i'm just saying that that is that has that's not what you're saying that's a source of the memory that's a source of Kevin, oh, yeah. Samuel, Kevin Samuels and the other freaking uh, dating experts or whatever, uh, and a manosphere and red pill guys. That's been that's been a hot that's been a hot topic and a, and, a, and, a, and a source for a lot of the foolishness to tie into the comedy of the whole thing. Yeah, it's I, I, optics, so, so that, man. So that's the thing. And optics, like I said, yeah. I said that, that's why I said that at the beginning. The optics, basura. And people, people are like, oh yeah, that optics don't matter. Yes, the fuck they do, bro. They, In they entertainment. Are- <laughs> they, they, it's, it's nothing but optics. Oh like your God. career, your career is optics, and and you know what? It's fine. I don't care how they structure their life, whatever. But I think I'll say this: you make your life open for public consumption. Like you're going to have to weather some storms. It is shitty that people. I mean, it is shitty that people are, you know, treat celebrities like they're not people, but, you know, they have to, they have to have some sort of awareness that when you expose your family, right. And then, you know, and this goes back to, you know, um, Will protecting his wife and protecting his family. If you really guys wanted to protect yourself, you wouldn't put your personal life out there like that. You know what I mean? For, you know, in that level of granule, you know, that level of detail. That's just my opinion. Like, I I would just, I just couldn't do that and then look back and be like, wow, man, people are really treating me like, like, what do you expect, man? It's just like, I can't blame them for that because they, they are victims in that sense, right? You know, I don't think it's right to victim blame. However, you are responsible, right? So there's, you know, it's not necessarily their fault they're being ridiculed, but it's their responsibility, if that makes sense, right? Like, let's say if you're if you're a victim of, you know, I don't even know, if you leave your car on park somewhere, right, and you get your shit robbed, it's not your fault that it got robbed, but it is your responsibility for locking your car, right? You could do steps to, to minimize whatever backlash could happen. Um, so I don't know. That's that's just my opinion. It's it's unfortunate all around, but it's like don't 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 slap it, man. Come on, it, bro. It comes with it. That's that that that's that's my last point too. It, it comes with it, and and Will even knows that. And he mentioned that in his uh, tearful uh, um, award <laughs> reception speech that yes, like when you are especially a top tier actor or top tier comedian when you've reached a certain plateau and you are on that iconic level or whatnot yeah you're gonna get fucked with i mean you're you're gonna get fucked with really on any level but that's on on that level you're really open to it nobody's safe from it so you know for him to react that way to coincide with what he's going to do i'm looking at a comment if you can't handle the heat Move over for niggas who can. Me, I'm niggas. That's funny. That comment is hilarious. Yeah. We could just, we could just, bro, if we made like a Rolodex of the memes and black Twitter over the past oh, two days, man. oh my God. Oh my God. Then Lapita, no one's talking about Lapita sitting behind Will. <laughs> Yo, that shit was Yo. fucking hilarious, oh bro. That shit looked like an episode of The Office, bro. She Yo, was just like... Rr, rr, rr. She looked like the the, the Pikachu meme. <laughs> and, 
and Nicole Kidman. That was too. I put all these in mind the story. Nicole Kidman. She was. She represented every white woman that loves Will Smith because of the Fresh Prince. Just. Oh my God. My word. <laughs> yeah, the secondhand embarrassment. I was having this conversation the other day. It's like I can see all types of shit. I can see. I could be relatively unaffected by seeing all types of things, violence, whatever the fuck, right? But secondhand embarrassment, that makes me cringe. That's the type of shit that makes me turn away from the screen. Like, it's it's to the point where it's like, I feel like, man, I'd rather be in that situation than you, bro. Like, damn, this is hard to watch. That's the base. Facts, bro. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Overarching message: Everyone treat each other kindly, with love and respect. Okay. Violence is not the answer. Violence is not, Violence the, answer. Is not the answer. Respect each other. And but watch also, and watch Jonah the Great. And Jonah the Great almost had a hundred thousand views. Is it at hundred? Yo, it's come at 90, on. It's at ninety. It's at ninety-four thousand views currently. Yo, but I'm not a rapper. That's crazy. <laughs> and Edwin's gonna be in Juice vs. Sauce which drops That's next crazy. month. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I fucked up this rap video. I'm proud of that. <laughs> we'll, save we'll save that. We'll save that. I'm proud of that. Yeah, oh girl, I love the way she do it. She get low like it's nothing really to it. She pick it up and she spin it back around and she get it from my mama. Damn, I knew it. It's your cool, it's your cool, it's your cool. Nice job, boy. Ibu Yeah, that's true. She move her hips so proper. Yeah, and she look like Rihanna.